adore printing with my jelly plates and I end up with so many prints, especially watching all the awesome videos here on YouTube. There are just so many techniques and different things that we can do. I want to show you some of the things that I do with my all of my prints because I like when I start printing, I just I could just print all day. Before we get to that, I'm just going to show you, because I'm using it a lot in this journal that I want to show you. This is a Japanese silk screen. These are things that I especially import for my store. I needed them for myself. I love putting lace and spray painting through lace in my journals, but there are some things that I just can't, couldn't do with it, just not get it delicate looking enough. And these are for a different type of printing, silk screening, but I can use them with my jelly plate after experimenting and I can get really lovely, delicate effects. So I'm just showing you the premise before I show you the journal so that you know where I'm getting all of these little lacy effects from. So after rolling paint through my the lacy silk screen, I've then taken a piece of paper from my own paper pad, the Jane Davenport paper pad, and I'm using that to pull the print. So this has already got colors on the back of it. And you can see why I keep one sheet of acetate that the, the plate comes with on there, because it keeps it clean and I can see through to the paper and see what my actual print is doing. And one of my favorite art things to do is lifting off the jelly plant, getting that, seeing what I've got, seeing what stuck, what didn't. Oh, so much fun. Isn't that pretty? I just, oh, I love lace. So like I said, these, are, I import them specially from Japan. So you can get them at janedavenport.com, but I'm just showing you this on the way. Uh, we're going to look at all sorts of different prints that I've made and what I've done with them. Because like I said, when I start with the jelly plate, when the jelly plate comes out and the brayers uh, and stencils or whatever it is that I want to use with them, i very happy doing this for hours on end and doesn't have to be in anything specific. So this I'm just putting print over print over print from a, um, I went to a jelly print play, uh, printing class and we started on some paper so I decided to keep mine fairly big and after the class I just kept layering on more and more prints more and more prints so I've got all sorts of different techniques there that I learned from Birgit Coopson and things that I've invented on the way and things that I've discovered and learned in different classes uh, from jelly the jelly plate website the jelly plate YouTube channel uh, the Jelly Arts team on Instagram. You need to follow all of those things so that people are coming up with new techniques, new ways to print, new ideas. Oh, look at all those layers. Look at all those layers. And I know this sort of stuff probably doesn't suit everyone, but it makes me it's so happy. I, I just, I think it's just so beautiful. And the thing that makes me so happy about my collaboration with Jelly Arts is I just adore my own plate. Just having it a little bit thinner, it, it's just easier for me to work with. And I'm doing more jelly bringing than ever before. So I'm using all of my own paint, only Jane Davenport paint, because it's so matte. Even my metallic. So here I'm using a color called Ancient Pages. I'm using a little scraper tool and scraping it through some of the silk screens, layering it over uh, other things that are already on the jelly plate, mixing colors and experimenting. Uh, I'm also, like you saw me before, I brayer through it, I scrape through it, I also scrape through just onto the paper. And because my paint's got a little it's just got that the right consistency for this technique. That's why um, I'm getting the good results. Well, I think they're good anyway. <laughs> this kind of creative chaos, this kind of madness of the just different colors and seeing what will happen next, it just appeals to me so, so much. Even the marks that you can make from excess paint on a brayer is a lovely little happening. 
I also love printing on prints that I've already done that I thought were done and dusted. Uh, I also, like I said before, printing on my own uh, pieces from paper pad. And very often what's in the paper pad is also from jelly plates as well. So I've got layer upon layer. And then there's, there's sprays, there's inking, there's paint. There's all sorts of things. And I use these sessions to really step out of any box that I might have fallen into to really experiment with color to I try and say okay what are colors I would never put together and see where that takes you because that can sometimes be very very magical it gives opens up little doorways that you didn't even know you needed to step through and then once I've amassed a nice little pile <laughs> of prints I can then bind them together and create something cohesive out of them so sometimes I might set up the papers so they're all the same size but usually I'm printing over multiple sessions then I find a cover and that will suit yeah most of what I've got so this is a whole bunch of different prints and then the cover that I went looking for in my stash, uh, I found this hilarious, well, I think it's funny, uh, vintage record that I bought. I don't know, can't even quite remember, somewhere in Europe at a flea market. Here's the record inside. There we go. And I thought this is going to make a great little book cover. It's got a funny little image on the front and it's quite a nice strong card. All I need to do is cut it at the top and bottom and it's already hinged. Then I can play with the order of the papers because they haven't really, there's nothing else on them. It's just color play. It's just jelly plates and prints and experimentation. It's purely a matter of thinking what pages are going to look nice next to each other or what are going to have the most contrast. I can add in other pages. I can have odd sized pages. I don't have to all be exactly the same size. If I wanted to trim the cover to match the pages exactly, I could do that as well. But I don't mind the pages hanging out at the side or the cover being a bit bigger or smaller. To me, that's all part of the fun. Next, I'm going to take some waxed thread and prepare a needle. I use an actual bookbinding needle. You don't need to, it's just the, the, a bookbinding needle has a fairly big eye and it's just easier to use, easier to thread. Uh, I'm using an awl to place um, five holes. So one right in the middle and I put my needle in there just to hold everything together. One just above the bottom of the, all the pages and then another hole in between the middle and that bottom hole. And at the top, I put just about like a centimetre or half an inch down from the pages, not the cover, the pages. And then another hole halfway between that middle hole and that top one. So five uh, all together. And then I bring my needle through. Whichever side you start from is where you're going to tie off. So sometimes you might prefer to tie off at the back, sometimes at the front, you can experiment with that. So I come through the middle needle, down to the next hole. Oh, I need to just poke my awl through there again. I'm just letting you see that. So it's not a perfect process. <laughs> and sometimes I have to shish kebab the pages through because I've got a lot of paper going on here and it gets even more uh, fiddly, I guess when I've got all sorts of different types of paper, different weights of paper. In this case, I've also got sticky tape and or packing tape from prints. Then I'm coming back up to that hole. So it's sort of making a figure eight, almost, because I'm going to skip the middle hole and come up to the next one. And then I'm going to do that same figure eight. There are many, many, many videos that go very slowly and instructions on the internet. This is a called a pamphlet stitch. It's just a very basic book binding stitch. Uh, I learned from Tisha Moore from her videos here on YouTube years ago and I don't think I've used any other 
journal binding method ever since. There's all sorts of beautiful ones, Coptic stitching and fanciness. This sticks my journals together. I'm more interested in putting the pages in and, and actually working inside the journal than the actual binding itself. As long as it doesn't fall apart, this is all great. So once you've come through that center hole again, you just tie off, I just do a double knot. You can get fancy and you can add beads and bejangles. If you're going to do that though, just remember you're going to have to then create on top of those and they can create a lump. So now I've got my little book and I can keep going. I've got a journal that is full of juice and color for me to create with. And I've got other videos here on YouTube in my online workshops that give you ideas of what to create on top of your pages. Here I am using palette pastels. And this is the drawing board technique that I've used to create her. So my little journal is nearly complete. But I think that brown paper there, she's boring. She's not as cute as the rest. So why don't we give her a little upgrade? I'm placing down some of my Cara's matte ink paints in uh, Look At Me Lilac, I Love You Pink and Minty Fresh, yum yum. Using a little tiny bulldog clip just to clip the pages together so that I can get in around and get some nice little painterly bits happening adding in a few extra colors from my other paint sets. Again, all the paint is matte. So if I want to keep working on these with watercolor, with pastel, with crayons, markers, pencils, whatever, all of it, all of what I've just mentioned, I can do that. So now I've got this little cha-cha-cha <laughs> journal. And then when you open it up, it's this full on rainbow happening inside. And then this is a great little size for me to carry about with me and just have creative fun in. Thanks for watching. You can see uh, all of my art supplies at janedavenport.com. Find out where all the stockists are. I've got videos galore and even a free workshop that you can come and join. See you there.